Testing, you hear me okay? Thank you. Afternoon, everybody. My name's Rich Richard Ladd. I'm a past master of Yacht Masonic Lodge here in Napa. Uh, we'll, we'll start with the Masonic service. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to perform the final act of parting from our brother, Grant that we may, ha we may have an inspired vision to enable us to look with faith beyond the veil and that our hearts may know the continuing presence of a soul now set free from the limitations of mortality. We pray thee to give us the strength to bear our daily burdens until we too shall enter onto the celestial lodge above to dwell with those who have served with us here until time shall be no more. Amen. Amen. Brother Robert Kramer, born October 19th, 1921. Deceased March 3rd, 2020, 98 years old. Raised to the sublime degree of a Master Mason, January 24th, 1956. He was a Master Mason 64 years. <clears throat> Soft and safe to thee, my brother, be thy resting place. Bright and glorious be thy rising from it. Fragrant be the acacia spring that thou that there shall flourish. May the earliest buds of spring unfold their beauties over thy resting place. And there may the sweetness of the summer's last rose linger longest. Though the winds of autumn may destroy the lo loveliness of their existence, yet the destruction is not final. And in the springtime, they shall surely bloom again. So in the bright morning of the resurrection, thy spirit shall spring into newness of life and expand in immortal beauty in realms above the skies. Until then, dear brother, until then, farewell. Let us pray. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord lift upon his light of his countenance and give us peace. Amen. That concludes the Masonic portion of the service. Hi everybody. It's wonderful to see you here. I'd like to recognize John Howe, who is back there. He's a professional harmonica player. And I invited him to come today. You, as most of you know, Dad played the harmonica. So we appreciate you, John, for being here with us today. Um, Tim Borman is going to read a poem that Dad wrote in 2012. And then... Uh, There'll be an opportunity for anybody to come up and say a few words. And we all loved mom and dad. The thinker and the sweetheart. <laughs> Each one of us has had our own unique relationship with these two during their full life together. We will hold our memories of them in our hearts forever. We could go on telling stories for days <laughs> that we have with these two. But I'm going to close here. Thank you so much for coming today to be with us. It means a lot, and I love you all. Billy McCoy.
MacArthur's going to be reading the eulogy after people come up and say some words and give a closing prayer. And that will conclude our service. And John Howe has a couple of more songs to play for us on the harmonica as we go on our way. And we won't be getting together afterwards because of this COVID thing, but in the days coming ahead, we'll have a chance to share our many stories. So thanks again. I love you. Good afternoon. I, uh, I had the honor and the pleasure of getting to know Bob uh, through a men's retirement club here in Napa called Napa Serves Japan for Sons in Retirement. And uh, I used to take him home after the meetings and I learned a lot about him and uh, especially how sharp his wit was and I hope I'm as quarter as that together if I live to live that long. Uh, he was an amazing man. And a lot of great stories, uh, a lot of great family stories that I enjoyed listening to. One thing I didn't know about Bob uh, is he was a poet. So again, I've been asked to uh, read a poet, the, uh, poem that he uh, wrote eight years ago, and the title of it is Campfire Reflections. I pulled up a log and sat basking. In the warmth of the campfire's glow, a coyote's howl brought a guttural growl from my shepherd deep and low. The, mo the moon hung low in a starlit sky, an owl's hoot lent to the scene. The smoke from the fire brought a tear to my eye, to my nose it was sharp and keen. Then something started me thinking how alike our thoughts might be to the billions of campfire ashes and the ghost that sat here with me. When the fire was first found useful to mankind econs ago, when the musings all that different as each bask in the firelight's glow. My guests are ghosts of campfires from my own to fires lost in years each conjures up a story to tell many end in sorrow and tears our ties to the past are unbroken oh, excuse me i can't see are, are none of us would be here so most of the tales tell of courage and the triumph of man over fear i marvel at current achievements yet as i sit in the campfire's glow they just don't seem so important as my guests fold their sheets and go. Robert Vernon Kramer, September 6, to read this about 20 minutes ago um, before all that, so let's see if I can make it through this. Um, <laughs> um, I'm not wearing a mask today, but Grammy would be proud because she did not like any of this. She didn't want to, She didn't want anybody wearing a mask. She didn't want to wear a mask. She thought it was um, silly and, and she was feisty. We all know that about her, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me read this um, so I can move past this here. So, um, yeah, Cindy Willie grew up with mom and Uncle Bob next door, and, um, yeah. She says, my special memories of Bob and Phyllis Kramer. I want 
to be, I want much to be with you today to honor Phyllis and Bob, but unfortunately COVID-19 has created a barrier for my attendance. My brother Crane will represent us today. Um, I had the privilege and blessing of being born next door to Bob and Phyllis Kramer, along with my brother Crane. The Kramers, including Gail and little Bob, <laughs> were our best friends and still are. We grew up under the old oak trees which shaded both our home and the Kramers' home. As I recall, we used to crawl out our bedroom windows on occasion, drop right down into the Kramers' front yard in order to join the fun at their house. Not that we didn't like our own, it was just more fun going next door. The food was better too, <laughs> for sure. And Phyllis always kept leftover bacon, pancakes, and toast on her kitchen counter after breakfast. If we timed it right, we had our second breakfast every day at Kramer's. When I was in second grade, there was going to be a fashion show at Alta Heights Elementary School, and I really wanted to be in the show. But the outfit had to be homemade. Since my mom freely admitted she didn't sew, I asked Phyllis if she could help me make a dress to wear at the fashion show. Of course, Phyllis took this request very seriously and helped me cut out the pattern, taught me how to sew on a treadmill sewing machine in her living room, and proceeded to make one of the cutest dresses for me to wear on the show. This wasn't the last time I sewed on the treadmill machine. I made many things with Phyllis at my side on her machine as I felt her guiding hand and love for me every time. I got it. If I can make it through this year, I can read this. <laughs> um, there are other things she taught Gail and me during those.